Welcome to Core Finance, where we're joined by Paul Wallace from the London Traders Network. A man who, whenever I see him, I think of obviously trading first, but then as soon as that, as soon as that's over, I think of drinking. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank yeah. you, Zach. Thank uh, you. But that's only because of your regular social events that you have. It, it is. Related to the London Traders Network. And it I believe is. that one is imminent? Uh, there's one this evening, six a year, one this evening. It's the, uh, what month are we in? July. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's July. Okay, so there's, there's one this evening, uh, the New Moon. Uh, the New Moon Pub, Grace Church Street. Next one will be September. Every two months, that's about enough for you, Zach. It takes you two months to recover. Well, it does, it does actually, yes. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad you'll be celebrating my 51st birthday in style. Oh, is that right? Well, probably somewhere around. Oh, yeah, probably around right. uh, September, roughly. Well, you know, but let's have a look at the uh, let's look at the serious stuff here, which is uh, <laughs> the line in the sand. Yeah, I, I thought. Um, yeah. I thought today what I'd do is I'd talk a little bit about something that um, uh, perhaps, you know, like let's say newer traders watching the, the, the show, just give them an idea of, of understanding the, uh, the importance of, uh, of you know, where, where markets can go on like a monthly and weekly charts. I, um, as you'll know, I, I love the weekly charts. I think they're, I think they're a fantastic, you know, tr uh, trading idea when, when the whole world is trying to trade euro dollar on a five minute chart. I, I'm quite happy to be uh, sort of uh, up on the weekly charts. But, it's a uh, lifestyle choice, isn't it? I think there's an element so of that, yeah. Sitting in front of a screen, um, yeah. getting sore eyes. Been there, done that. All right, I work for funds, okay. Been there, done that. Been at my desk at half five in the morning, still at half there at half ten at night. Been there, done that. Got a t-shirt. Have no real desire to go back to that in any way, shape or form. So, uh, you know, they get their pound of flesh from you. They really do get their pound. Thankfully, I've got a lot of flesh to, to give away. So, uh, that's not really a problem. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, what I thought I'd do is uh, I, I saw la at the end of last week, okay, in the weekly closes, there was a, um, let's say, some lines in the sand that were, were were broken, and I thought I'd just raise that just so we could have a little uh, have a little chat about that and give us an idea. So uh, um, this is to set the scene. This is uh, the monthly chart of the dollar index, okay? And, and really, the the reason I want to talk about this was um, sort of January we had uh, a key reversal there on the uh, on the monthly chart, okay? So it's the, it's the kind of for those of you at home, it's the big it's the real big sort of kind of engulfing red candle that we had from uh, from January of this year. So that kind of gave us an indication that you know sort of dollar strength was 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 done all right it was done and then we've had a, a break of a trend line and 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 we've had a continuation and then at the end of uh, last week we kind of broke through 95 as well so if we go down to the uh, the weekly chart which is uh, is what I've got next so uh, this is the same thing on a weekly chart um, a, a very simple pattern a, a one two three uh, uh, top there Okay, and the, the 20 period moving average uh, turned from being dynamic support to dynamic resistance. Trend lines broke and, and, and price, the dollar started to fall away. Okay, so it's been a, uh, a, a, you know, a dollar bearish story for, for, the, uh, for the year. So is, it, is it worth it looking at over your shoulder at the fundamentals? I mean, apparently the reason, the reason for this uh, dollar weakness is uh, people are the pennies dropped in terms of uh, people realizing that Donald Trump, you know, he, he's not going to be able to deliver on any of his... Uh, um, Trumpflation and uh, tax, you know, yeah. uh, promises. Um, so, I mean, at the moment you can't even arrange a drinks party in a, in a brewery. Um, so, you speak to me, I can. <laughs> he, I think he needs your help. But apart from apart from meeting Putin, he can't really do very much. No, that's very true. But there was there was definitely an element of that. Um, there was definitely an element of that. I, I, I think personally, for what I sort of try and tell. What I try and tell uh, traders, let's say young traders, is that um, you know I, I, all I have to do is to make a decision. All right, you know, am I going to be a buyer? Am I going to be a seller? Or am I going to sit my hands? That's it. Uh, really, it. That's it. So it's just a chart. You're just saying there's a red candle. There's a red candle here. Exactly. Yeah, that's um, it. Exactly. I make a decision, and it's actually it's the trade management, the money management, having an asymmetric reward to risk ratio. That's where the uh, that's where the good stuff happens. But um, but anyway, that's just kind of set the scene. That's the dollar index chart. And if uh, um, you know, if we go to uh, this is pound against dollar on the weekly. We had a lovely kind of, call it what you want, double bottom, triple bottom, there'll be people calling it inverse head and shoulders, but the, the kind of the thing I'd like people to notice is that we had uh, 130, all right, 130 was a, a line in the sand, and at the end of last week, we had, a, we had a convincing weekly close on the other side of it, okay, uh, and this week what's happened is we've come back and, and touched that 130 and, and bounced off, and I think it's, it's bouncing around about 130, 40 at the moment, it's probably, probably changing as we speak, but you know, it's kind of like a line in the sand, all right, at the end of last week was, was convincingly... Uh, was convincingly broken, and that's kind of the the, the story that we want to, to talk about. Okay, regardless of um, regardless, let's say of the uh, shenanigans in Sterling. Okay, you know all the sort of sentiment driven at the moment, based upon uh, you know Brexit and uh, the Conservative Party. Still, you know, it's still the the, the pound was able to beat the uh, to beat the dollar. So, uh, so we had one thirty there. If we if we go on to the next chart, it's a bit of a long one. This is a euro dollar. 
on the weekly chart. Sort of line I've drawn in there is a, a 114.50. All right. If you look at that 114.50 on the weekly chart, if you look at that, it, it, for the last couple of years, it's it's held as a as a level. All right. We've we've pushed above it on the weekly, but we've never been able to close above it on the uh, on the weekly chart. Uh, and that's what we actually happened at the end of last week. Uh, and this week, it's 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 powered on from there. It's it's you know once again, it's another significant line in the sand that's been broken once again, given the implication of dollar weakness across the board uh, and an element of euro strength as well. Is that something you expected? Because uh, most people who came on said 130 on on cable is not going to break, and uh, 113 on euro dollar. No, and I'm sort of thinking, all oh, right, okay. Well, um, one of my mentors from many, many years ago gave me a great piece of advice, which is that you know, if you don't know where a market's going to go, have a look where it has to go to cause the most people the most pain, because that's probably where it's going to go. Uh, and it, it, was, it was sage advice. So if everybody's coming on saying, it's never going to break 130, it, it's never going to break 114.50, it's never going to break 73 as we come on, well then there's a good chance it probably will, because that's what will cause a lot of people a lot of pain. So, so uh, trading is literally fighting your own um, shadow, your own reflection. And yeah, well, we're not natural. We are not natural traders. I think there's, uh, to become a good trader takes a, a, a real degree of behavioural change. All right? and most you've got to be psychotic. Not psychotic, not psychotic. But, but something, you've got to have some kind of screw loose. I mean, you've got to be, because you've got to be able, not have the emotions that other people have when they see something. So you don't get excited when the market's yeah. by the top uh, on, on a wave of exuberance and you don't sell at the bottom on a wave of despair. I think, yeah, th there is that. I think there's, um, I think people like to think that traders are emotionless, you know, that, that, is, that is just, you know, it's ice cold water runs through Dr. the veins. Spock. Yeah, kind of like that, yes. But the reality is we're, we're, we're just a big bag of chemicals, really. You know, you know, it's the emotions flowing through us. It's about, it's about being able to detach yourself from it. It's about knowing and understanding, you know, you are not fear. You know, when you're experiencing it, that you are not fear. You are just experiencing fear and being able to recognize that and still make a good decision. So, um, so yeah, so the 114.50, here's Kiwi dollar. Uh, those of you, have, I think I might have mentioned this past, 73, okay, has, uh, has been a uh, significant level on Kiwi dollar for the last couple of years. We saw all of last year. I mean, really, whenever it got up there, it got battered all the way down to about 69. Start of this year, came up, did it again. Beautiful, big, sort of a, a key uh, weekly reversal, engulfing candle. It got battered down to 73. Uh, and actually, what we happened was a couple of weeks ago, we got up above it. And last week, we, we held above it, okay? Regardless of, the, regardless of an element of strength, sort of starting to leave Kiwi dollar, it was still able to hold above 73 and, it, and it's nudged its way north of it. So once again, we're seeing, you know, real uh, signs of, of dollar weakness, okay? And it's, it's the weekly chart, it's a, you know, it, it holds some weight in terms of uh, its, uh, its move. And then I think my final chart was uh, Aussie dollar. Once again, just look at that on the weekly chart, 77, okay? What you could see is that lots of punches above it, but we couldn't actually close above it for a couple of years. That's what happened at the end of last year, uh, last week, sorry. And it was a very convincing close, and, and actually, even since then, we've we've pushed up, and it might, I, I suspect it might only it won't be long before we see eighty on uh, on Aussie dollar. So, Paul, just want to remind everyone of uh, one of my favourite events of the year, one of the six uh, favourite events I have every year. Um, <laughs> could you just run us through that again? So, um, uh, basically, London Traders Network is, uh, is, is just it's a, an old school style social network, whereas actually, instead of sitting behind screens uh, trolling each other, you actually have to get out and, and come to a pub and, and have Troll a, people in person. A, well, I've seen you in action, yes. Zach. You're very good at it. You're very good at it. You, you're, a, you're a master of the dark arts. All right. So, uh, um, it's the, the salad bar of the New Moon Pub. I have it every two months, six times a year, every two months, that's, that's enough. But, it, you know, it's, it's, I, I encourage traders, all right, it doesn't matter whether they've been trading for two weeks or two decades, get out from behind the screens, come and actually have a, uh, have a chat, share your war stories with, uh, with other traders. No one really understands your experience or, uh, like another trader, you know. Give the, your poor partner a break for a couple of hours of listening to your tales of daring do in the markets and come and have a beer and a chat with others. And the weather's nice at the moment as well. And the weather is nice, the weather is nice, well, yeah. I'll make the most of that. Paul Wallace from the London Traders Network, thank you very much. Good pleasure.